and welcome to Value Chain TV News Update. I am Adalbio Guijofo with the news. On the news update, there are indications that the federal government promise to pay an additional 35,000 Naira wage to its workers for six months have been met with difficulties. Reliable sources have confirmed that the federal government does not have enough money to pay all federal employees as initially announced when it removed subsidy. Value Chain TV, ask some Nigerians your take on the issue. I actually read it in the news and uh, I saw also a circular from uh, uh, National Income Salary and Wages Commission. And uh, fortunately, as uh, it is, let me say good news, you know, I have received mine. I can show you the alert. I received it yesterday evening, 35,000, say, IP, from IPPIS, September palliative. That is the write-up. The government are not sincere to a single servant. If the government are sincere, they will pay each one of them what is due for them. Are you, hearing me? you can't say you are paying others complete and you are not paying the other people complete. It's not, it's not good. I hear me. Anyone that do work for you, you deserve your pay. So the government are not sincere. So we are urging Nigerian government to do the needful. Minister of Works Dave Umahi has said that the country will need 18.6 trillion naira to fix the road sector in the next four years. The minister made the declaration Wednesday when he appeared before the House of Representatives Committee on Appropriation to defend the 300 billion naira for the Ministry of Works from the 2.176 trillion naira supplementary budget. Maimuna Bagudu completes the story. Omahi appealed to the National Assembly for the provision of contingency funds for the ministry to deal with the emergency situations of the country's roads. He reiterated his earlier call for the construction of concrete roads, saying it is less expensive and more durable. He said the request for the 2023 supplementary budget became necessary to restore some of the funds removed from the 2022 supplementary appropriation in order that to enhance project completion and provide emergency repair works on field sections of the roads. The minister said the sum of 300 billion naira proposed for the Ministry of Works is targeted especially to the highway sectors to ensure free flow of traffic on federal road networks, especially as the Yellow Tide approaches. Memona Bagudu reporting for Value Chain TV. President Bola Ahmed Sinubu has urged the National Assembly to approve his request to borrow $7.8 billion, which is equivalent to over 6 trillion naira, and another 100 million euros, which is equivalent to over 83 trillion naira, as part of the 2022-2024 borrowing plan for the federal government. The president's request was contained in a letter read by the Senate President Godswill Apabu at the plenary. In the letter, President Tinubu said the former Federal Executive Council under ex-President Mohamed Buhari had approved the loan facility on 15th of May 2023 to finance infrastructure, health, education, agriculture, insecurity and other sectors. Some Nigerians who spoke to Value Chain TV expressed reservations about the development. Borrowing is a factor. It's illegal. If at all, it's going to be used to benefit the intended which is aiming at collecting. For example, when a loan is for infrastructure development, and nobody will say no. It's important for every country. However, what the borrowing turns into is, is, is the issue that should be addressed. If you borrow, you use it judiciously. No country in the world that does not borrow. Every country borrows, but they put it into the right use. After days of positive runs on the Nigerian Exchange Limited, the All Share Index has crossed the historic high of 70,000 basis points at the close of trading Wednesday. This marked a positive start to trading activities in November as the market closed with over 1.7 trillion naira in October. 
at the close of trading, the all share index, which tracks the general market's movement of all listed equities on the Nigerian exchange, closed at 70.5876. At 1.94% or 1345 one, 1.57 rise from Tuesday 692 36.19. Chief Executive of the Nigerian Upstream Regulation Commission, Benga Komolafe, has advocated for crude oil producers to get supply before export. He made the call in Abuja, where he noted that the move is in line with the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, which mandates the oil producers to fulfill their domestic obligations to local refineries. Maimuna Bagudu completes the report. Komo Lafe insisted that it will be a national shame if Nigeria is not able to supply modular refineries as well as the upcoming Dangote refinery enough feed stock for their operations. Quoting relevant parts of the PIA, he stated that it was in contemplation of these that Section 109 of the new law introduced the domestic crude supply obligation to Nigerian's oil industry in a bid to ensure that domestic refineries have enough crude supply for their operations. Komolafe added that the law currently stipulates that the supply of crude oil to the domestic market shall be on a willing basis buyer and willing seller basis where the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency, NMDPRA, shall report to the Commission where there is inadequate supply to the refineries. Memona Bagudu reporting for Value Chain TV. The African Refiners and Distribution Association, ARDA, has identified the need for market equivalent pricing and taxation framework as a means of attracting the needed investment in the downstream segment of the continent's petroleum industry. Executive Secretary of ARDA, Anibal Kraga, stated this while delivering a presentation at the Oil Trading and Logistics 2023 Expo in Lagos, where he added that there was a need for the continent to also create a clear policy to grow security in the aspects of liquefied petroleum gas, LPG. Chat Moses completes the report. Speaking during his presentation, Kraga said there was a need for coordination across the continent. He added that tightening and harmonization of cleaner oil product specifications remained inevitable in the face of looming health and environmental dangers. He also called for transparency and forward visibility around medium to long-term regulatory frameworks, as well as coordination across key sectorial ministries to support investors' business plans. Kraga stated that sub-Saharan Africa oil products demand would hit 100 and 77 million metric tons by 2040. He insisted that the rising demand in Africa requires significant investment in storage and distribution infrastructure. Chad Moses reporting for Value Chain TV. The Executive Secretary of the National Lottery Trust Fund, NLTF, Bello Megari, has revealed that Nigerians spend about $975 million, which is equivalent to 700 billion naira daily on online betting. Megari said this in Lagos at the second edition of the Biennial National Gaming Conference organized by the National Lottery Regulatory Commission, NLRC, where he predicted the sector's progression in the next four years. He noted that in a nation with widespread poverty, over 65 million Nigerians across the country spend an average of $15, which is equivalent to over 11,000 naira daily on betting with 14 million bet takes and payments made online. Value Chain TV asks Nigerians their opinion about the development. Betting is a game, understand? And uh, there's, no, there's no crime in betting. That's just the truth. If you, want, if you wish to bet, you can do. It's either you lose or you win, understand? So anybody that has the mind to, to bet, Fun are good. We have had uh, we have had uh, stories of how people won some millions of dollars because they are they are betting. So they are trying to lock. I will never do anything like that. Betting for what? It increases high blood pressure. I'll be expecting something I'm not I'm not sure of. 
So it's I, to me, it's, it's not a thing. So if government sees it as an avenue to raise capital, to raise tax, to raise money for the country, let them go ahead because uh, I, I don't, I would, I will not subscribe to betting. And that's it on the news update. I am Adalvio Guijofo. Thanks for staying with us.